let us now consider the following exam task. Um, task 1, uh, part A, let y be an open square y. Uh, this unit square is often written in the following way, 0 to 1 square in R2. And compute the L2 norm and the W12 norm of the function u given by x1 square. Well, the um, answer to this is the following. We just uh, take the partial derivatives of uh, u first. Partial derivative of um, this function with respect to x1 is 2x1. It's very easy. And since there's no dependence in the x2 variable, the partial derivative of u with the with respect to x2 is equal to 0. So um, these two components are the components of the gradient of u. Uh, so the first component of the gradient is 2x1 and the second is 0. Well, in order to compute the L2 norm of u, we only need this expression x1 square. So we recall that L2 norm is given by the square of the integral of the uh, square of u. Uh, did I say, say the square root? I meant the square root, not the square. Okay, so um, in this square uh, y is uh, easy to integrate uh, on. It's just a double integral from uh, 0 to 1 0 to 1 in the x1 direction and the x2 direction. So here we imp insert uh, the value of u. Um, so we, for we get x1 in, f in uh, 4. And this is very easy to take the uh, find the integral uh, in this case. Um, and this is very easy for you. You know this from how to proceed. We get um, the antiderivative of x1 uh, if in fourth is in the power of uh, 4 is um, one fifth uh, x1 in, in the power of 5. So then we insert these limits 0 and 1 and uh, we then get the constant um, which we integrate with respect to x2 and the result is just 1 over the square of square root of 5. So this is easy for you to calculate. No, uh, when we are computing the uh, Sobolev norm uh, we do the same but we add the term, the gradient of u square. So the the absolute value here uh, of some vector is always this value uh, square plus this value square and then we take the square root of the result. But we have squared the absolute value so so um, uh, therefore this value will only be 2x1 uh, square uh, plus 0 square uh, and this is rather easy for us to compute. Let's do So uh, we just get the integral and this integral is rather easy to compute. We have uh, here the x1 in fourth plus uh, 4x1 uh, square plus uh, zero it doesn't matter what uh, that we add this term because it's zero and taking the antiderivative of this is rather easy it's just a polynomial and you know how to do this and then we insert the boundaries and get an um, uh, easy integral to compute because it's it just a constant um, when we compute this and 
integrating with respect this constant with respect to x2 is also very trivial. So um, doing this you get uh, this number, the square root of 23 over 15. Uh, let us now turn to task 1b. Here we are going to determine whether the following functions are in some of the Lebesgue and Sobolev spaces. L2, W12, W12 per, or W012. And the function we are going to consider is following. U of x1, x2 is x1 uh, in the power of 2 over 3, plus x2 in the power of 2 over 3. In this first case, um, y, this, we have a cell, uh, in fact a square, which is the unit square, from 0 to 1 square. Uh, then we have the, this uh, function u of x1, x2, which is sine to x1, multiplied with cosine to x2. And here y is equal to 0 uh, to 2 pi square. So it's a little bit larger square with side length 2 pi. Okay, let's start with the, the first of these tasks consider if they are in one of these spaces, these four spaces. Before we start, just recall that uh, we have uh, these inclusions. W0 is a, a subset of W pair, uh, the space of periodic functions um, uh, of this uh, cell. W10 it's this space is a subset of W10 and W10 is a space a subset of the largest space L2. Um, okay, let's now consider whether y, u is in L2. Then we take the integral over the cell y of u square as we did uh, before. Uh, now we are checking if this is less than infinity or not. So in our case we just have a square so it's easy, it's a unit square from 0 to 1 so it's uh, just simple double integral. And here is u, here's the uh, expression for, for this uh, function um, and we just insert this instead of u. Now we observe that in this square, which is just positive values of x1 and x2, uh, these two uh, functions are less than 1. Why is that? Yes, because this is increasing functions uh, from 1 to 0 to 1, so the largest possible value this um, function uh, this term can take is um, less than 1. Replace x1 with 1 here. That's what we have done here. So we know that this integral must be less than this. And this uh, is much easier to compute than this integral. So we obtain that these are 1, one pl plus 1 is 2, square is 4, so that's an integral of 4. And the integral of 4 on the unit square is just equal to 4. And 4 is, uh, of course, less than infinity, so you must be a, a member of this space L2. So let's turn to um, the partial derivatives of u with respect to x1 and x2 respectively. We know that the, this partial derivative is just taking the derivative of this guy. We get 2 third multiplied with x1 in minus th uh, 1 third. Similarly, we obtain that the partial derivative of u with respect to x2 is 2 uh, third multiplied with x2 in minus one third. 
So now we uh, just find the integral of um, the square of the partial derivative with respect to x1 and this is as above a double integral of this type and it's really easy for us to compute this integral uh, this will be 4 over 3 and 4 over 3 is less than infinity. In this case However, note that we cannot make any inequalities. Um, it's um, um, of the same type as a bow because this function goes to infinity when x1 goes to zero. So we cannot f uh, easily find upper bounds. Okay, since um, this, this integral is less um, than infinity, we conclude that this is a member of L2. Moreover, we do the same for the uh, partial derivative of u with respect to x2. It's equal to 4 uh, over 3 due to the symmetry here. Uh, and it's less than infinity, so the partial derivative of u with respect to x2 must also be a member of L2 of y. So what we have found is that u is a member of L2, um, the partial derivative of u with respect to x1 is a member of L2, and the partial derivative of u with respect to x2 is a member of L2. And thus we conclude that u is a member of W12 of uh, this capital Y. Well, now we know that U is a member of uh, W1 pair. Uh, we don't know whether it's uh, a part of W pair, uh, which is a smaller subset. So let us uh, check out this. We have this is omega and uh, we have some arbitrary point here on the boundary x1 um, or let us uh, start with this point. Uh, this point uh, is 0, um, um, zero x2 and this point is 1x2 because the length here is, uh, is 1. So the first coordinate is 1 here. We have some general point um, and we are going to check whether the function is equal in these two points. Let's do this. We start here with, um, with the value here, u of 0, x2. Uh, we just replace x1 in the uh, definition of the function u. Uh, replace uh, x1 with 0. Uh, and we keep x2 because it's an arbitrary uh, uh, variable, and we get that x, uh, uh, we get that this function in this point is equal to x2 uh, in 2 over 3. Okay, let's do the same here. U of 1 x x2 is uh, when we are replacing x1 with uh, this uh, constant value 1, we obtain uh, 1 plus x2 into third. And, uh, already here we, we um, can conclude that these two values are not equal. And since they are not equal, uh, you see it's no, no way that this value can be equal to the same value plus 1. So, since these values are not equal, we conclude that the function is not a member of W uh, periodic.